Henry Vaccaro with the Henry Vaccaro Corporation a long time ago in Neptune, New Jersey at a construction company started in 1964, built over a billion dollars in construction projects throughout New Jersey Hi. in 1976. He was uh, one of the main investors of uh, Kramer Guitars in Neptune. Now, here's where the story is where the story starts to go. Now, first of all, Henry was part of the uh, Berkeley Hotel. Uh, he went in with... Uh, his brother Sebastian, Johnny Cash, and Ernie Anastas purchased and refurbished the Berkeley Carteret Hotel, a $16 million restoration project at the time. Hotel opened the rave reviews in 1985, went on to win numerous awards. And uh, in 1976, he was the main investor and owner of Kramer Guitars in Neptune, New Jersey. And it was Kramer Guitars that would lead to an encounter with the Jacksons and the Jackson family. Henry, welcome. Tell us the story. I own Kramer Guitar Company, and um, we we have made guitar. We made a custom guitar for Tito Jackson. Right. And and I really respect Tito. He's a the class quiet guy. Jackson. Class guy. So we made a custom guitar for Tito. Then on a Jackson Victory Tour, the entire band played Kramer Guitars plus. We also owned a Spectre bass company, and a bass player played Spectre. How about so, that? So everything's going great. Okay. And then, uh, now I got to fast forward to uh, 1992, and I ended up in a bankruptcy as a result of the problems in Asbury Park. Uh, if it could go wrong, it went wrong. Right. Uh, if you recall, back in around 1990, we had the savings and loan crisis, right. and five banks were doing business with failed. The Bank of Boston gave us a $50 million commitment to build a high-rise. They advanced $18 million, and they pulled the plug. Oh. So it started, that, so everything was going bad. The hotel went into a Chapter 11. I eventually lost the hotel. So what am I left with is Kramer Guitar Company, right? Okay. So now I'm approached by the Jacksons, who had just started a corporation called JCI, Jackson Communications, Inc., and they patterned, patterned it after Warner Communications in New York because... The guy that set it up was a group vice president with Warner named Bob Petralia. Okay. I got to be friendly with Bob, and he says, hey, the Jacksons are interested in buying Kramer Guitar out of bankruptcy. Great. So we signed an agreement, and they agreed to fund a plan, a reorganization of Kramer Guitar Company. And make the first payment. Everything is great. Now it's 1993. Michael gets accused of the first child molestation. I don't know how true it is, whatever mm -hmm. it was. The investor backs out. Okay. Who's the investor? Pepsi Cola. Oh. So they're going to buy. So now, now the Jackson default, they don't make the next payment. My company gets converted to a Chapter 7. They have an auction and they sell off the name Kramer. They sell off the name Spectre. And today, you Gibson, lose it Gibson all. Guitar Company now owns the Kramer name. And Stuart Spector bought back his company, Spector. So you're no longer affiliated with Kramer Guitars no. or any of it? Wiped out. Okay. Wiped out. So I sued JCI, and I get a $1.5 million judgment. Ah, okay. That ain't so hard. million, all right. Okay. Only problem was they thumbed their nose at me. They said, hey, you got a judgment against a corporation with no money in it. You're not getting nothing. Uh, well, I'm, a res <laughs> I'm known to be a little resourceful. A resourceful guy, right. For that stuff. Okay. And um, I recreated their company on paper. Took me three years and went before a federal judge and pierced the corporate veil. I got personal judgments against every stockholder, Michael, Janet, and all of them. Oh, my God. Okay. The only problem is the laws in California are designed to protect celebrities. For example, if I have a judgment against you, I physically have to serve you. Or your attorney. With all the security around Michael and John, I could never serve them. Uh -huh. But I didn't care. I had everybody else. Had Couldn't Mr. you give it to the chimp and have the chimp walk it over to Michael? <laughs> <laughs> I had Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, Tito, Randy, Reby, Marlon, Jack, and Jermaine. Eh, I'm going to collect a million five. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay. Now, I fly to California and we take a, what's called a debtor's exam of the mother and the father mm -hmm. where they lied. They said they had nothing. Oh. Nothing. Mrs. Jackson had no cars, no bank accounts, fake furs, costume jewelry. Yeah, right. So my lawyer says, well, Mrs. Jackson, how much are you worth? She said, less than $1,000. This is Michael's <laughs> mother. <laughs> so, okay. Uh -huh. Thank God there was a stenographer who took all this down. The lawyer is driving me back to the hotel, and he says, you know, I hate to disappoint you. I don't think you're going to get all your money. They don't have anything. And I said, they have money. I was at their home. I was at their home when I sold them Kramer five years earlier. We had a five-day workshop, and I'm in Havenhurst and Encino. 
I know what they have. Right. right? And I'm, look, I never wanted their money. I just wanted my money that they owed me. So now he drives me back and he says, I don't think you're going to collect. So I got to the hotel. Now I call home to my son, Henry. And he and we just now we're in 1999. We just right. got he just got a computer. He says, Pop, let me look on the Internet. Maybe I can find a detective. So in the morning, he called me back. He said, there's a guy right on the same street where your hotel. You should try to reach him in the morning. So I call this guy and I hit the jackpot. I got a man named Frank Kunis. OK. And he says, you have what? I says, personal judgments against the Jacksons. Really, has it been transferred to California? I said, yes. Do you have a writ of execution? I said, yes. The next words out of his mouth, I hate the friggin' Jacksons. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I got the right detective. I said, what do you mean? He said, old man Joe screwed a friend of mine and the poor guy lost his house. He said, mister, I do this for nothing if I didn't have to earn a living. So the first thing he gets back, he said, we can collect this. He said, get rid of the lawyer that you have. He said, I'm going to give you a team for 30%. You're going to get a lawyer that bites and doesn't let go, and you're going to get me, and we'll lay out all the money. Great. Okay. Week later, phone call. He says, do you got a TV show called Inside Edition? I said, yeah. He said, put it on. I said, what for? Put it on. I put it on, and I see a roll-off truck pulling two Rolls-Royce cars out of Mr. Jackson's driveway. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, this is a satisfied debt with a New Jersey contractor. That's how it started. Uh, he couldn't find any hidden bank accounts because there's so many people named Jackson in California. Right. So he sets up a sting. He set up a phony company and sends the whole family a $30 refund check. Three of the jerks cashed the check, and on the back is their bank account information. Oh, my God. He got 11000 out of those accounts. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so now we've got two Rolls Royces, probably eleven or 12000 out of Mercedes. Okay. What happens next is... Uh, is the detective goes through the glove box of the Rolls Royce. He finds an insurance card. Mrs. Jackson said she had no insurance, so they subpoena State Farm Insurance. State Farm refuses to honor the subpoena. My lawyer goes to court. The judge issues a bench warrant to arrest the president of State Farm of California for <laughs> failure to honor federal <laughs> subpoena. Is that true? <laughs> the next day they send up the file. In the file is a copy of a canceled check where Mrs. Jackson paid for the insurance from a bank account she said didn't exist. Now we know she right. So now Fernandez goes to the bank and he says, uh, I have an a order to uh, satisfy judgment. There was like twenty or 30000 in the account. He goes there, the account was closed. Somebody tipped her off and she closed the account. Uh -huh. Fernandez was a tiger. Goes back into court with what's called an ex parte application. I feel like I'm a lawyer now. <laughs> okay. Ex parte means single party. In other words, normally if I would sue you, I have to notify you and your attorney we're going to be in court. Right. You do something crooked. I go in there, you don't even know I'm there. So this ex parte hearing, and a judge issues a sealed subpoena for the chairman of the board of Wells Fargo Bank for his eyes only to turn over Mrs. Jackson's last three years of bank statements and cancel checks. Wow. Now you know... How much comes in and where does it go? Okay. Each month she's writing a seven or eight hundred dollar check to a warehouse in Oxnard, California, sixty five miles away. Kunis goes out there, spends a week, not only finds the warehouse, finds the owner. It's a, co <laughs> it's a copy of the lease. Okay. It's leased to the name in the name of Tito Jackson slash Jackson Main Event. Okay. I have to backtrack many years earlier when I was at their house for this five day workshop. They're discussing all the ventures that JCI is going to get involved in. And one was called Jackson Main Event, which was a restaurant division patterned after the Hard Rock. But it's only going to have Jackson family memorabilia. Okay. And I get a copy of the private placement memo and I keep it. Okay. So in the document, it says Mr. and Mrs. Jackson own all the memorabilia, list what they own. And, oh says, my God. and it says Tito's been collecting it. <laughs> and we use that and we get a seizure order to raid the warehouse. Seven U.S. Marshals is sent on this warehouse oh with my, a locksmith. This is a movie. you got to make this. <laughs> Good. With a locksmith, and they go through, they open the door. Okay. Right. And they start taking stuff out. The marshal says, I wasn't there, but he tells my attorney, he said, wait a minute, you got enough stuff out of here. He says, you you already got two Rolls Royces. You got this Thriller piano. I'll tell you in a second how we got that. And uh, you got some cash. And if you sell this for more than the judgment, you have to give them the change. And by the way, what's in the back... Looks like it's Michael and Janet, and since you don't have a judgment against them, remember I couldn't serve them, mm -hmm. he says, that's got to stay. So that gets locked by the marshal. My stuff goes to a bonded warehouse where it's photographed and inventoried. The next thing they do, the whole family file bankruptcy. I lose everything. I have to give it all back. You do. 
because under the laws of bankruptcy, anything happens within 90 days of a date of a bankruptcy belongs to all the creditors. I got to get back two Rolls Royces. I got to get back to the oh, piano. Oh, man. And all this memorabilia. So on top of the world one day, I'm down at the bottom getting beat up again. What does that feel like? What were you feeling at that time? <laughs> I was pretty low. Yeah. Pretty low. You think you finally hit the Holy Grail and now you're getting beat up again. So during this time period, since the, the whole family filed bankruptcy, the trustee takes over both warehouses. The warehouse left behind because it was in Tito's name who filed the bankruptcy and the warehouse in Oxnard where the stuff was moved to. So globally, he's got two warehouses full of everything. So now there's lawsuits flying back and forth. Who owns what? Who doesn't want to own what? He wants to end it. He goes to court on the 20th of October, 2002. Right. And the judge signs an abandonment order to abandon both warehouses where my stuff was taken, the stuff that's left in, abandoned back to Tito, providing Tito pays the $60,000 in storage fees. Okay. Tito doesn't pay the storage. Stuff that's worth millions, he doesn't pay the oh storage. My. The trustee went back to court the first time in the history of bankruptcy court where somebody gave, some, the judge gave somebody something. He now took it back <laughs> and he says, sell it. That same day, my lawyer calls up the trustee, what's going on? He says, I'm going to have an auction. How much do you want? If you can give me an offer of 25000 to cover my legal fees and 60000 to cover my warehouse fees, I'll recommend a sale. And that'll be the floor. He says, that'll cover my fees and it'll cover the warehouse. Anything left that more than that goes to the creditors. Fine. Right. I said, okay, I'm going to put a bid in. My lawyer says, Henry, you can't bid. I said, what do you mean? He says, under the law, you're considered an insider. Insiders can't bid. Well, I had a friend of mine had a corporation. He submitted a bid. I made a little side deal with him. He submits the bid, gets accepted, subject to an auction on the 3rd of January, 2003. All right, we got to stop there because I got to hit another break. Henry Vaccaro, here, former owner of Kramer Guitars, sells a company to the Jacksons, ends up uh, in a lawsuit with the Jacksons, ends up winning the lawsuit with the Jacksons. So first of all, we got, we got Sean. Uh, on Route 78, who is loving this story. Uh, Sean's on New Jersey 101.5. Hey, Sean. Hi. How you doing? This story is awesome. I am doing great. I feel like a kid in the olden days, listening, sitting next, waiting for the radio, for the commercial to go off to listen to the rest of the story. This guy <laughs> is a great narrator, by the way. And you, you're right. He should make a movie out of this. Oh my God! Oh, thank this, you. Yeah, this is like a this is like a series. This is like a mini series. Hey, who, 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 who are we going to get to play Henry? It really is. <laughs> I can't song. wait to hear the rest of it. Okay. All right. Here it comes, Sean. Thanks for the call to New Jersey one hundred one point five. The day of the auction, my friend who owned a corporation who submitted the bid is in the hospital. He can't go. Went to the hospital and I had him sign a document naming my son-in-law as the acting president of Elbridge Corporation. Nobody knows he's my son-in-law. He, Mark, my son and I fly to California. The next day is court at 2 o'clock. I can't be seen there. I'm pacing up and down in a Marriott like my life depends on it. Quarter to 2, I get a frantic phone call from my son and Mark. Henry, Henry, we're going to lose. Mrs. Jackson's here. She's got a bodyguard. She's got a lawyer. We're going to lose. I said, Mark, calm, calm down. You're going to give me a heart attack. <laughs> Five minutes later, Tito's here. Randy's here. Oh, my God, Michael Jackson's lawyer's here. I know we're going to lose. Said, oh, my God. Calm down, please. <laughs> Ten minutes later. Henry, you won't believe this. Nobody had a certified check. We got everything for $25,000. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, how about that? So I got all the gold records. I got all their awards. I took all their file cabinet. I took everything that was in that warehouse. I had their contracts. I had canceled checks. I had from all over the world. Oh, my God. Bank books here. This, I had it all. Okay. Now I'm having trouble selling it because the stock in the Jackson family was down. Everybody, mm -hmm. you know, with all these rumors and stuff. If I get a brainstorm, I'm going to do a pay-per-view website and give you a virtual tour through everything I had. I had the deed to Neverland Ranch. I had Michael's driver's wow. license. I had uh, lawsuits. Henry Vaccaro, construction magnet yeah. from Neptune, New Jersey, mm -hmm. gets all this. So now I'm, I'm doing a pay-per-view. I'm going to do a uh, pay-per-view website and give you a virtual tour. We hired a professional company to photograph every item. It took weeks. That's how many items we had. We had the website all designed. Now, word got out that I had this. I got a call from People Magazine, and they want to do a front page story. I granted them this, and I said, look, I'm not looking to get paid, but just when you print a story, you can't come out until I tell you you can, and you got to put my web address. They agreed. Okay, so 
I called Ernie Nassis up from Channel 2. He came down. Everything is filmed. It's all in a can. Right. So make a long story short. Come Monday, people are supposed to come out. Ernie goes live Monday night. CNN goes live the next day, right on down the line. They plug my website. Okay. Problem was, so having just come out of a bankruptcy, I didn't have a merchant account. I don't know you need a merchant account. <laughs> I think I called a credit card oh, company. No. So the thing is going to go live. Mm -hmm. Goes live on Monday, a million and a half hits at four ninety nine. I can't collect a penny. Oh, by Wednesday, five million hits, and the bank is. Oh broken. my God, Henry! Wait a minute. By Thursday, I get served with a hundred million dollar lawsuit by Michael Jackson, a hundred million dollar lawsuit by Janet Jackson, and they close my website. Wait, hold on. We got to stop here. I got another commercial break. All right, the throw back ending is coming up. Don't go anywhere. Henry Vaccaro. I, you know what? I have tremendous respect for you. One man takes on the Jacksons, the whole family. Sometimes it takes a little guy. And he wins. You know, a little guy. You know what? And you got the book, uh, Johnny Cash is a friend of mine. Yeah. And this book that you're going to write about the Jacksons is what called what? It's called Michael Jackson is not a friend of mine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Subtitle because I never met him. But I sure as hell met his lawyer. And oh we'll yeah, talk about that now. Okay, here we go. Now this is the this is the climactic okay. ending. What we got? Okay, so now I come out with this website and they shut it down. I got served with a hundred million dollar lawsuit. The website where you were going to show a everything paper, that you won in this suit yes, from Michael Sue and Michael Jackson. A and his pay per view family. website. You right. got a virtual tour walking through my museum. Right? Okay, it closed me down. I am devastated. Okay, I can't afford a lawyer. The cheapest lawyer was two hundred thousand dollars what after all mr vicar you're in federal court in the southern district of california with a client with deep pockets we don't take these on contingency everybody turned me down well i'm smart enough to answer the lawsuit pro se so i can't they can't get a judgment against me to at least so i can have my day in court so i kept calling i called all my friends and i had called up court tv i was interviewed by diane diamond on court tv and some of the other people i called them up i said hey you guys got to help me. Can you get me a lawyer? Well, I think they tried Gloria Allred, and she turned me down. Mm -hmm. And a week later, I'm, at this time, I'm still doing construction. I'm tearing a big building down. I'm on an excavator. My phone rings. I stop and pick up the phone. Uh, this is Mr. Vicar. I say, yes, this, this is Bert Pig. I said, I don't know any Bert Pig. He said, I'm an attorney in New Orleans, Louisiana. I understand from Court TV you need my services. I said, well, I sure do, but I don't know if I can afford them. He says, you have $5,000? I said, sure. So now I fly to New Orleans to meet Mr. Pig. Okay. <laughs> Not Mr. Big, Mr. Pig. <laughs> Mr. Pig. Okay. Bert Pig, incredible man. Mr. Pig, as it turns out, is a nighttime law professor at Tulane University. How about that? He says, I want this as a class project. I'm going to use all my students to help with the research and everything. And this will be great for them. And it'll be great for everybody. And this will cover my filing. Mr. Pig becomes my lawyer. Okay. Okay. Now, the next thing that happens is Michael gets charged criminally for uh -huh. child molestation. And if you recall, after the case he found not guilty, he takes off for Bahrain, mm -hmm. and he never pays his big law firm called Lavely and Singer. He owed him 300000 bucks. They make a motion to be relieved as counsel for non-payment. Mr. Pig makes a motion to have the case dismissed. The judge throws the case out with prejudice. I'm the only one that can use Michael's name and likeness on the Internet as we sit here and talk. You okay, you, so you ended up with everything. Yeah, yes, okay. Now I'm Look just gonna, at you. <laughs> okay, keep going. Keep I'm just going to fast forward because okay. I know we're, we're short on time. Okay. I wish you another hour. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I had all these master recording tapes, thanks to Guy Daniels. Okay. Mm -hmm. He preserved them and all that. So we found out that they were from the, the Jackson television show. So they're no good unless you own a copyright. So I go drive to Washington. Well, Henry Vaccaro. Well, of course, Mr. Goes, Vaccaro goes to Washington. <laughs> it goes through the copyright file, and I find out that Joe Jackson, the father, owned the copyrights. I did some more research. Of course he did. <laughs> yes, okay. okay. Well, in 1999, when they filed bankruptcy to stop from paying me, he never disclosed that he owned the copyrights. That's bankruptcy fraud. I went to California last year, got an attorney, <laughs> and I reopened a 20-year-old bankruptcy of Joseph Jackson. And notified everybody, and I purchased the copyrights from the federal trustee. And you don't somewhere. mess with Henry Vaccaro. <laughs> you sure do not, no matter Steve, who you are. But the important are. thing about this, Steve, is this is the stuff that's never been marketed before. This is like the missing link, someone's yeah. missing link. And, and we were talking about earlier. The, the, the blessing was mm -hmm. that 
the only people that got notified were the creditors of Joseph Jackson. Well, don't forget, Michael is alive in 99, so mm -hmm. Michael, there was no Michael Jackson to say. So they never knew about this. It slipped under the radar, or they would have gobbled this up. They never knew about it. Nobody shows up, and I buy the, all the copyrights and intellectual property for 25000 bucks. All right, so now you own everything. I do. What are you going to do with it? We're going to market it. God damn it, we're going to make some new music. It's been a pleasure. It my has been pleasure. a riveting pleasure. Oh, my God. Henry Vaccaro, thank you so much. My Guy pleasure. Daniels for hooking us up <laughs> here. This is, uh, so now uh, there's got to be a movie on this, a documentary, well, something. we're working on it. We're working on it. All we're right. You keep us posted. Maybe some reviewers will call in and, you know, urge me to go on. My viewers right now, they're sitting there with popcorn. <laughs> and they're watching. We will talk. Trevia coming up. Thanks, guys. New Jersey 101.5. Did you?